I know I've read people going back and forth. Did she actually set out wanting to be queen or was this something that events spun out of control for her and she got placed in this horrible situation or a situation that overwhelmed her um, and she didn't want to be like her sister and so this was her other way out. What do you think about this idea? Did she really set out for this wanting to be queen? I think there must there was probably a point at which, yes, she did. Mm-hmm. Um, because the way she the way she treated Cardinal Wolsey, um, and that's in 1527. That's quite early on. Because I mean, Henry had um, it's, by, it's in around 15, 1525 probably. Henry first started pursuing Anne, and th- this affair was kept very secret, as according to the rules of courtly love. And it was only it was in the spring of 1537 when the French ambassador raised the question of the. Princess Mary's legitimacy and started set alarm bells ringing in Henry's head and Henry starting looking at reading Leviticus and thinking that his marriage is unlawful and he wants an annulment and secretly he applies for one and it's the, it's in the autumn after that that Anne Wolsey goes to France on a mission and when he comes back Anne makes her venom absolutely clear mm-hmm. and she's she's obviously set on a certain path now did she want the crown but rather than the man we don't have her replies to Henry's love letters. We've got a huge gap. And in many ways, she's unknowable because we don't have the wealth of letters as we do with Catherine of Aragon, who poured out her heart passionately, all her feelings, all her hopes and fears into her letters. Mm-hmm. But for Anne Boleyn, we don't have that. Right. So she is unknowable. And most of what we've, we've got is, 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 is reports from other people, often hostile, because she was very unpopular. There's no doubt in that. State papers are absolutely littered with slanders. So I don't know. It's very hard to, it's very hard to decide what she felt because she went, she, when she was queen, she went through the conventional forms of saying that she loved her husband. But in those days, it was, a, it was a spouse's duty to love their husband or wife. You can see it. It's a rather different approach. Mm-hmm. If we say we love our husband or our wife or our partner. We, we know that we, you know, we actually mean it we, right. in that sense. But when they're saying it, it's a convention. And so even that isn't really a clue. Right. It's not like Jane Seymour, who was terrified that Henry would you know, leave her when she was frightened of the plague and everything. She clung to him. Um, we don't get that with Anne at all. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's increasing. Uh, she had mastery over him. I'm not saying she didn't have affection for him, but we just don't know what, what she actually felt. This is, this is what's so frustrating. Uh-huh. Um, I know. And also, people say she held him off for seven years. Um, I don't think so. And I think that someone who he was, he was, he, it was, the passion was on his side, definitely. And I think he, he made that decision not to sleep with her. I, and it, 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 it had a, a really bad impact on him. And I think that, but I mean, if, if you love someone, it would be very hard to resist them for that time. Sure. And that, that's what makes me wonder. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. You talk about the impact that it had on him. Um, how do you think Henry was changed by Anne? It wasn't just Anne. I think it, I think it was. It happened before that. Um, I think people say there's a very popular theory at the moment that Henry was knocked out cold in 1536 after a fall from his horse right. and was unconscious for two hours and it changed and changed character because of possible brain damage. Right. The, the, the report that says he was knocked out cold it actually comes from a highly unreliable source in Paris. And sources in England uh, say he took no hurt. Mm. They all say it was amazing he wasn't killed, but he took no hurt. Nobody seemed unduly bothered in England. I think the report got garbled, and we can prove the others. It says that there's other sources, the papal nuncio in Paris, to have been inaccurate in other, in other reports. Mm. So I don't, I don't buy that theory at all. There's no other evidence, no evidence to support it. And uh, if you look at Henry changing in character, you can see that happening gradually, right through from the 1520s onwards. And I think it was frustration that made Henry what he was later on. And it's frustration at not having a son, at being trapped in a marriage from which he could not get out, at not being able to fulfill his passion for Anne Boleyn, and at the Pope endlessly delaying, dithering over giving judgment for political reasons rather than religious ones. Mm-hmm. And I think all these things combined in Henry, and anyone, but by the end of this time, anyone's defiance was anathema to him, mm-hmm. because he was so frustrated with everything. He'd been a good son of the church. There was no real reason. There was a way out 
of, of annulling the marriage. The marriage was probably valid if you look at the canon law, the marriage to Catherine. Mm. But there would have then one might have Wolsey wanted to offer the Pope a way out, but Henry didn't want to do it because it would have meant arguing, uh, you know, that Catherine had had hadn't hadn't been a virgin when he'd been saying all along she had after her, his brother died, mm. and he didn't want to do that. He would have lost faith. I see. But it might have been the way to you know, for the Pope to have given a judgment favourable to Henry without offending Catherine's nephew, the Holy Roman Emperor. So what do you wish that everybody would know about Anne? What's kind of something that, that you, if you could say one thing about Anne to someone who's never looked at this time period before, what would you like to say about Anne? It's a very dramatic story. Because how could you say just one thing? Because it's almost as if there are two Anne's. Okay. There's the Anne on, who, in the tower and on the scaffold who has this dreadful end and, and shows incredible courage. And there's the woman who has been the scandal of Christendom. And then there's another Anne, of course, the Anne who pushed through the Reformation mm-hmm. and was, was a, politi- a, 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 a skilled political operator. So she is degree. really multifaceted. That would be the one yeah, thing she about is multifaceted. her. It's, it's, she is. You can't put and this modern, the way people romanticize her in a modern way, also she was, she was beautiful. I mean, you, if you look at some of the images people draw of her, or the, the artwork that appears on the internet, it's such a romanticized view. And she's, as I say, she's become a, a, a celebrity, and it's so far removed from this woman who wasn't very beautiful, as, as most people agreed, and who, um, who, who could be quite vicious, but also who was very, very tough. It's rather different. I think if, if she hadn't met the end she did, supposing she'd had a son, I don't think she'd have the following she does. Right, that definitely adds to the drama of it all. Oh, it does. It's, yeah. it's romanticism in its broadest sense. It's a very dark tale. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, I have to admit, I'm one of the... I, I haven't always been very sympathetic to Anne. I, I guess she's just been overdone so much and I kind of yep. just don't... I don't know. I, I just kind of my eyes glaze over or something when people start talking about her. Um, but I, I'm really interested to to read this new research. And I I love the writing of Christina Pizan and the City of Ladies. And that's such a you know, yeah. fascinating book. And so um, it's so interesting to imagine her at the court of Margaret of Austria and reading these things and then taking that back to England. I'm I'm excited to see her from that perspective. Well, you will get quite a bit of that. And there is an author's note at the back. And there are going to be articles published. I think BBC History Extra um, is coming. There, there, there will be several things coming up on, on these aspects of Anne, which go into more detail. Yeah. The Tudor Times will be about Anne in France. It's a bit of a mystery. It's a, it's, it's a mystery what happened to Anne in France. Um, the, the likelihood that she knew, at least by sight, Leonardo da Vinci. And... And, you know, this European perspective, we need to see Anne in that perspective because that's what, you know, that's, that's, what, that's what made her. 